The default file for major headings is called Heading 1, but the default settings that Microsoft have used within Heading 1 style are not suitable for academic work, so you will need to modify Heading 1 style to suit your needs. To modify the style, all you need to do is right-click on it and choose to modify. And you can see that the use of color, for example, is one of those options that you will definitely need to change since in academic work, the preferred color choice for all the text is black. So changing it to black. The font must be the same as the rest of the document. And in my case, that will be Arial. But please double check your module handbook in case you are required to use a different font. It's always a good idea for all headings to be bold since it makes them stand out more within the text so it's easier to follow for the reader. The font size that you need to choose for heading 1 will depend on your personal preferences to a great extent and also how many different levels of headings you need to use. Since your main text is size 11 or size 12, all your headings must be bigger than that but a major top level heading like heading one must be bigger than heading of level two and heading of level two must be bigger than heading of level three and so on and so on. And all of them need to be bigger than the text. So you need to make sure you start large enough to allow yourself smaller and smaller headings while still maintaining them to be bigger than the text itself. The default size is 16, which is actually absolutely fine to use but if you prefer, you can make it a little bit bigger. You can choose size 18, and that also will be perfectly acceptable. Size 20 is a bit too big, so I would definitely avoid using 20. And using smaller than 16 will not give you enough steps to create their smaller headings and subheadings. So keeping it 16 is probably a good choice. From the next set of options, you'll need to decide if your headings are going to be left aligned or centered. Those are your two choices really, because having it fully justified is not a good idea since you'll be using bigger font and that means you will fit fewer words on a line of text. If the computer needs to stretch that text to make it fully justified, the chances of bigger visible gaps between the words are much higher. So you generally have to avoid using fully justified for headings. So either left aligned or centered. It's personal preference. So I'm going to choose left aligned for mine. You have to keep all your different levels of headings exactly the same alignment. So if you choose to have them left aligned, all of your headings are left aligned. It may be a good idea to take a note of the settings you choose so you can make sure that all your different levels of headings are consistent. After you've specified the basic settings, you can go to the format button and choose the paragraph options to access the more advanced settings. And here you will see the outline level is marked as level one. So when you use this style, the computer will automatically know that this is a major heading. And when you request your table of content, it will be included as a top level heading. No indentation is required. So we'll just ignore this option at the moment. And we'll need to consider now the spacing options. When you're writing a dissertation, your top level headings are your chapters and they should always start on a brand new page. So the chapter heading will be the very first thing on top of the page. So there's no need for additional spacing before such heading. We'll need to reduce it to zero for a dissertation. The space after will definitely need to increase because at the moment with zero points, that means that this heading is going to be very close to the following paragraph and it will look like it's only for that following paragraph and not for the next few pages, as it will be the case in a large document. So we'll definitely need to increase that distance. I'm going to choose 18 points. You can use the arrows to make it 18 or you can click and type any number you would like here. 18 points is usually sufficient. There are a few more options that are very useful within the paragraph settings and they are within the second tab, line and page breaks. The first three options are ticked by default for a major heading and they're the widow orphan control, which controls how a paragraph is split between pages 
and it simply doesn't allow a single line of a paragraph to be separated on a page, which will be the orphan line separated uh, from a paragraph. Keep with next, we'll keep this heading with the following paragraph, which is extremely important. You should never have a heading at the bottom of the page with no text underneath. So this option, when enabled, will make sure that the heading stays with the following paragraph. If there's not enough space, it will simply move the heading to the next page. Keep lines together is also a useful option in case your heading ends up quite long. It's not going to allow it to split between pages. It will always keep the lines together as one block. The next option, page break before, is very useful when you want your major headings to appear on top of a brand new page. So when you're writing a dissertation, you just need to click this option. And every time you use this style, it will automatically move to the beginning of a brand new page. When you're ready, you just click OK to confirm all the changes. And you click OK to confirm the modifications of your heading one style.